Let's give it a shot. Marine reacts to SCP-3000, also known as Anatashesha, and his object class Thaumiel, by the Exploring series. As always, I'm going to be leaving a link to the original video and channel down in the description below. So go ahead and make sure that you check them out. Also, FYI, when I say the name again of this SCP, take it with a grain of salt. Now, as far as it being a Thaumiel, I actually had to go to the SCP wiki site because it didn't say it in the description and obviously when finding this video it looks like um, more like an eel instead of a snake and it looks enormous obviously I don't understand how this is gonna be a thumbnail like I don't see how this would help the SCP foundation I mean other than that I'm I can assume it can have some kind of secondary effects that somehow helps them but nothing really coming off the top of my head I mean depending on how big it's gonna end up being I'd be curious to know as to why hasn't anyone, at least in, obviously in the SCP universe, why no civilians have seen them. Or maybe they have SCP Foundation found out and they give them those amnestics. Also, I'm going to be mentioning it in this video, but I'm also going to mention it on the Warhammer 40k series that we're doing. I am fully aware that I tend to do this when I'm speaking. I smack my lips together. I do it involuntarily. I mean, I hate it personally when I do it because I hear it every time. I'm working on it as far as minimizing it as po as much as possible just because it's involuntary. I've really done it quite a few times just in this intro alone. Let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. Hit that notification bell right there. I'll get notified every time I do upload. Sometimes I'll play twice a day, typically working on them in the mornings, I'm releasing them in the late afternoon to late evening. That way when you all get off work, Enjoy the videos at your leisure. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and see what SCP-3000, or also known as Anatashesha, is all about. SCP-3000, Anantashesha. I somewhat got it right. Anantashesha. I like. I physically can't say it. The SCP Foundation is aware of a number of entities that could be considered gods, or godlike in some way. Some of these are actually contained by them, while others are uncontainable, either existing outside of our physical dimension, or for some other reason. For practically all of these, though, the Foundation treats them with extreme caution, as they represent little more than threats to our existence. There is an exception, however in SCP-3000. Its status as something godlike is debatable, which we'll discuss later, but it is a rare example of a Thaumiel entity, an anomalous creature that the Foundation utilizes to help their operations. Simply put, I wonder if it has a certain amount of intelligence as far as like, I don't know, I mean not necessarily speaking, but is it able to maybe communicate with them, works with them, knowingly unknowingly most likely willingly because it doesn't seem like they would have any way that i can think of or any scp that they can use to i guess bring it in their own physical control so very curious as to what exactly or how exactly it does help the scp foundation and maybe as to why would it but scp 3000 is a massive eel located in the bay of bengal near india 3000's full size is unknown, but is believed to be between 600 and 900 kilometers long, ending in a head 2.5 meters in diameter. 3000 is not necessarily contained, per se, but since it rarely moves, the Foundation simply patrols the region of the bay where it's located and prevents any diving expeditions in the area. It was discovered in 1971, after a number of Bangladeshi fishermen went missing after drifting near the Indian coast, and the Foundation stepped in to investigate. It Wait, so okay, then it means that it's in some form of hibernation, possibly? Because they said that it wasn't moving, and also on that matter, um, if it is in a hibern hibernation type state, or if it does hibernate for some amount of time, I wonder how long that actually is, so that they know at least within that time frame, the SCP Foundation, at the very least, has to increase already what they probably already have as far as containment procedures, because they know that this is when things can get crazy. And 
if it's deep enough, I can see why a lot of people who are civilians wouldn't be able to see it, depending on how far deep it is. So. Its biology is not well understood by the Foundation, but they hypothesize that it doesn't actually require any sustenance in order to continue living, but it is carnivorous. It's unknown exactly what happens to prey it consumes. But during feeding, 3,000 excretes a thin layer of a viscous substance that the Foundation has dubbed Y909. Its existence as a massive eel, hundreds of kilometers long, would certainly classify it as an SCP alone, much like SCP-169. But that's only the beginning of its anomalous traits. We've discussed cognito hazards a few times before. Anomalous effects that can alter an individual's mind or way of thinking and SCP-3000 itself is a cognito hazard Direct observation of it will result in head pain paranoia fear panic and memory loss or alteration and Even being in a certain vicinity of the eel can result in these effects these effects are further described in a log discussing the initial discovery and encounter with SCP-3000. Curious to see how far that range can actually go. A team descended in a submersible, and all of them were feeling uneasy. But one in particular began sweating profusely, stating that he was missing something, but he couldn't figure out what. He begins to act more erratically as they descend, expressing doubts about what exactly he's supposed to do down there. Other members of the team began to express similar feelings. When they finally saw the body of the eel, the erratic individual began whimpering and had to be sedated as he muttered the word no over and over. When they finally approached the head, several other members were complaining about feeling hazy, unsure of what they were doing here. The captain wrote it off as nitrogen intoxication. SCP-3000 turned its head to look at them, and the sedated member began barking and shrieking, claiming that it was in its head, until he smashed his face into one of the potholes, and they had to ascend due to the cracks. He had mortally injured himself, and as he lay dying, he said, There's nothing, nothing, nothing. Despite this incident, a diving expedition was ordered to personally assess the creature and investigate the source of the thick gray fluid that had been observed around its head. Three members of MTF Orion 9, Kingfishers, were sent down. The water was dark and cold, which was to be expected, but other problems began almost immediately as the team becomes confused over their call signs, both mixing up who has what designation, and one of them even being confused by the word designation. Okay, I believe it was in a previous video. I don't remember which SCP one, but so I had thought that they had gotten the substance or the material to make amnestics. I can't even remember the SCP, but someone told me like, no, it was from another SCP, and I don't remember they said 3000, but if they did, it would make sense. And this is me kind of guessing, because obviously they're trying to figure out what this liquid is on his head. And the fact that every time they start going down there, they start forgetting things, right? Now they're forgetting their call sign. And so I'm assuming that this is the SCP, that they're going to get that su substance. And I'm sh I think it's the one that they're saying that's on the head for the SCP Foundation to make amnestics. Which I guess would also, in a sense, make it a thaumule. So that would really tie a lot of things together, if this does end up being true. So... That would make it a thong mule, not by choice, not by willing, just for kind of being there. The leader also addresses someone back at the command station who had been dead for two years. Regardless, command tells the team to continue towards the entity, but each of them are completely confused about where they are. As they continue approaching, one of the members begins to utter ominous phrases concerning oblivion and dark eyes. SCP-3000 begins to rapidly approach them, and their radios go silent for 30 seconds. When they come back, it's clear that the team is in chaos. Looking at this photo specifically, or just thinking about the deep ocean, is one of my biggest fears. Honestly, I was always glad in the Marine Corps that I never had to be in a mule, or 
uh, the Marines, I'd go with the Navy in, in the boats. I was always glad. I was always an Osprey, despite how chaotic they can be in their own way. And one of the members has been eaten. The leader seems to have completely forgotten who he is, where he is, and what he's doing. He soon gets eaten as well. Only one of the team remains, and he still seems to be somewhat coherent, claiming that it's extremely difficult to form thoughts while near 3000. He says that it's coiled inside of his head, and that it's just sitting there in front of him. He sees the fluid seeping out of its skin around its head, and he goes to retrieve a sample, sending it up towards the surface. He finishes by saying not to send anyone else out here. His breathing could be heard over his radio for three days before ceasing. I mentioned at the start that SCP-3000 is a Thaumiel entity, meaning it somehow assists the SCP Foundation in their operations, and you may be wondering how a giant eel that messes with your head does so. The answer is in the gray fluid excreted from the entity, called the Y909 compound. The Foundation utilizes a large number of amnestics during their work, chemicals that cause an individual to forget certain things. These chemicals are vital for keeping the secrecy of the Foundation and the SCPs intact, as well as helping many SCP personnel cope with things they have experienced. For a number of years, the Foundation's amnestics were rudimentary, breaking down fairly quickly in storage, causing a number of side effects, and had often questionable efficacy overall. The inclusion of the Y909 compound has greatly increased the stability and effectiveness of the Foundation's amnestics, however, allowing them to store for much longer, a significant decrease in side effects, an increase in suggestibility and memory clearance, and little to no intrusive memories years after their use. The Foundation has come to completely rely on the Y909 compound, with no means to synthetically reproduce it, and so the ATZAC protocol is introduced. The protocol is simple enough. It involves deliberately feeding a sedated D-class to SCP-3000, which causes it to excrete the Y909 compound. A specialized team of deep-sea divers then approach the entity within two and a half hours after feeding, during which its cognitohazard effects are lessened. They collect as much as they can of the fluid and return to the surface. So the, the whole cognito hazard aspect isn't going on all the time. And oh my god, I, can't, I couldn't even imagine being that D-class. And as far as them saying that they haven't even tried or don't really seem to want to make it synthetically, this brings me back to the your friendly neighborhood Keter, where I think they're using them, at least in that universe, from the vi the video that I saw that they were trying to get him to be able to produce the amnestic itself, because like he's the one that can create anything so so long as he knows what it's actually made of. The rest of the SCP-3000 report concerns two doctors, a researcher, Doctor Krishna Morthy and his staff clinical psychologist, Dr. Manava. The psychologist was assigned to the researcher after he attempted to exit out of the SCP-3000 monitoring submarine without diving equipment. The researcher begins discussing how he feels tired, and his body is beginning to feel disconnected from his mind. He's forgetting things about his work and his life, and he's been having dreams featuring people he doesn't recognize and places he's never been. It's clear that his proximity to 3000 is greatly affecting his memories, as he is unsure if he's even married, or if he has children, despite having five of them. He does see 3000 in his mind, however, and at this point he begins discussing Anantashesha. Anantashesha. But as far as with these amnestics, the fact that they give them to uh, people, civilians, that they want them to forget something that happened, most likely an incident where an SCP was revealed to them. So, with that in mind, are the people who are getting affected, for example, this person here, if they're getting affected, is it a permanent thing? Like, everything they've forgotten, they can't remember it anymore. Or as they start to get farther away from it, that those memories start coming back. 
the king of serpents in Hinduism, that lies beneath the god Vishnu in the cosmos. He recalls that his mother told him once that when the light of the universe had gone out, Anantashesha would be all that is left, past the end of time. He believes that SCP-3000 is Anantashesha, a god that exists across all of time simultaneously. He says, In defiance of the nothingness that comes after this, all of this, there is Anantashesha. There is a chance that my memories might live on, that I might be remembered like the memories I've seen have been through me. I don't... I don't have proof of this, but when I looked into its eyes and saw what it showed me, I was afraid. I'm merely a mediocre man, Anand. This was a fear that I have refused to acknowledge for years, a fear of irrelevance, that no one will know who I am when I die. Afraid of being forgotten. Afraid of my life being meaningless. Afraid of being alone. Afraid of dying. There is a terror within me that I cannot reconcile, Anand. I won't lie to you and tell you that the maw of the Naga does not terrify me as well. But between this and the infinite dark I have gazed into, I have made up my mind. Dr. Krishnamurthy was held in containment for two days before being released. Three hours later, he approaches the airlock to the submarine while weeping and prepares to open it. Proximity alarms begin to blare as SCP-3000 approaches the submarine. The doctor puts on a diving suit and exits the submarine before anyone can stop him. 3000 approaches him and opens its jaws wide. The last thing the doctor says is that he was wrong, and sobs as the eel consumes him. The rest of the crew begin preparing to carry out the ATSAC protocol. We're given some excerpts from Dr. Manava's journal, in which he discusses that he now has to figure out why Dr. Krishnamurthy became suicidal, and how to prevent it from happening to any of the other personnel. He writes that he's not a very religious man, and doesn't believe SCP-3000 to be anything other than an anomalous eel. He racks his brain thinking about his father and his teachings of Hinduism, but cannot recall much, although he blames this less on the eel and more on his own willful forgetfulness. He was allowed to look through Krishnamurthy's effects and keep any that he wished, and so for some reason he decides to take a statue of the god Ganesh. Manava is aware that his continual proximity to SCP-3000 is draining his memories, both from his youth and more recently. He makes an attempt to learn some Hindu poems and songs, but can't seem to memorize any of them. We're given a memorandum from the site director that elaborates somewhat on the Y909 compound and the ATSAC protocol. The Foundation originally believed it to be blood, but it's more akin to a prion slurry. Prolonged exposure to the compound is pretty similar to prolonged exposure to 3000. Some of the biologists believe that when SCP-3000 consumes a human, it is breaking down some part of their brains that makes them sapient, and the residual substance from this process is Y909. They also found that SCP-3000 is not digesting these humans at all, and their bodies are still inside of it. In other words, SCP-3000 is capable of breaking down and devouring the human mind, causing them to forget their own existence, and the Foundation is purposefully encouraging this in order to create powerful amnestics. The Ethics Committee and the Classification Committee are looking for ways to make this more tolerable, but since the Foundation really depends on these amnestics, the process continues. The final log is another journal page from Dr. Manava. He has been spending a great amount of time studying the effects of SCP-3000, but still has no idea what would cause a sane man to step out of an airlock into its mouth. Earlier that week, he had knocked over a picture of him and his family, and found that there was writing on the other side, with his name, 
his wife's name, and his daughter's name. However, the writing was in Dr. Krishnamurthy's hand, not his own. This puzzled Manava, and he began to be stressed by the uncertainty of it. Finally, he went into the personnel archives and discovered the truth. The woman was, in fact, Krishnamurthy's first wife, and the girl was one of his daughters. Manava had believed that they were his wife and daughter, but more than that, he had memories of them that he now realized were in fact Krishnamurthy's memories. This realization causes him to finally understand exactly what SCP-3000 does. It breaks down and destroys human consciousness, the spark of thought that makes us unique and what we believe to be a soul, and then scatters it. It leaves a husk behind that is nothing more than electrical signals passing through matter that will someday become inert. He writes, If even I can't remember myself, how can I expect anyone else to remember me? I have forgotten my own life, and I am strangely apathetic at this revelation. I will fade into the darkness, as thousands before me have, and thousands after me will. No one will care, as I am forgotten. I do not despair for my own sake, but for us all, you and I, we will all face obliteration. I am not important. You are not important. Vast droplets of irrelevancy stretching eons in the sea of time. We may fight against it, but our enemy is inevitability. Okay, it's been bothering me. With the picture, then... The other guy thought the family was his, but it wasn't. Because when he looked in the back, it had his own handwriting. So even he thought that it was that other guy's family. And when he figured that out... See, because I was kind of thinking, like, maybe not only does it... I mean, he did he did say that it takes your, breaks down your conscious, right? Or the thing that makes you sapient. And I was thinking that when you become a husk, in a sense, when how he was describing it, is that... If there's someone else in the area, does your conscious kind of transfer to that other person? Or is this conscious, as far as breaking it down and it leaving your body, is that what feeds SCP-3000? Because it said that it doesn't require sustenance, but maybe this is the way it does. I do not think that the eel is a non tashesha I don't think it would matter if it was. What is clear to me now as I feel myself coming apart, is not that the eel is some mythological creature or divine serpent. Perhaps it's just a primitive creature that eluded us, holding no malice. Perhaps it really is a primordial deity, harboring resent beneath the surface. The eel is not the harbinger of my demise, or humanity's doom. The eel is not the end of all things. It only shows us what the end looks like. And in spite of everything we might believe, every ideal we hold or providence we pray for, I know this much is true for all of us. Our end will be a forgotten one. Dr. Manava was later discovered near the airlock after consuming a significant amount of raw Y909. Unresponsive, he was moved to Site-151 for analysis. SCP-3000 is a dark SCP, and the concept of destroying memories and human consciousness makes what would otherwise just be an enormous eel much more interesting. Existential dread affects many people from time to time throughout their life, and it's not unusual to be concerned with who will remember you, what will they remember you for, and ultimately, your purpose here. Dr. Manava was probably right that SCP-3000 is not a deity that exists throughout all of time, but it is certainly a powerful entity. There are many SCPs that can kill, or maim, or horrify humans, but there aren't that many that can destroy what it means to be human, and that makes SCP-3000 pretty unique. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about that for just a minute. So we did find out that this is where they get the amnestics from, or at least the material to make it. 
the loss of consciousness or breaking it down and then just continuously bringing up that theme of being forgotten or forgetting like things or people and then you know it really starts to I'm bringing out like kind of what he said at the end that existential crisis of kind of where you belong and I did realize as well I, I don't think I mentioned it during the video that when they said that this SCP doesn't require sustenance I feel like that was more just because obviously if you've got a big type of animal such as Neil you know it's gonna have to consume a lot just to keep it alive and on that you know gotta go to the bathroom somewhere and I feel like just to avoid any and all that and all the complications that would bring as far as this uh, document I feel like that's kind of why he said that uh, it doesn't require sustenance and the fact that it still is considered carnivorous and it does eat the people that it doesn't really digest them I'm not really sure how they would have figured that out unless they brought some form of x-ray also if anybody does know uh, as far as the actual range of the cognito hazard effect with this SCP comment that down below I would be very interested to see just because I feel like that could start spending out a lot of questions and that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. It really does help me a lot. Just like if you didn't like, it helps me for the channel. If you're curious to see what's coming up next, check the description down below. You're going to see a list of about five. From top to bottom, it's going to be how I view them. But until then, I'll see you all.